Ever since Bill Boeing began tinkering with his first flying machine in the days before World War I, the company has had but one overriding goal, to build the best aircraft humanly possible. In the beginning, Boeing's planes were built in a converted barn. Nothing fancy, but the space was adequate. As the number of orders and the size of the aircraft grew, so too did the assembly buildings. Today, Boeing makes some of the world's best and biggest commercial jetliners. Not surprisingly, Boeing has created a suitably massive nest for the birth of these gigantic birds, the Assembly Building in Everett, Washington. Hi, I'm Jeff McAtee. It's hard to grasp the enormous scale of this building just by looking at it from a distance, but believe me, it is huge. In fact, this is the largest building in the world by volume. More on that later in our program, but first, I'd like you to meet Boeing's top tour guide, Sarah Murr. She's going to take us on a, an up-close and personal tour of the Everett plant. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Welcome to the Tour Center, Jeff. Thank you. This is where we host about 100,000 people every year. We have displays here for the visitors to look at. We have Boeing retirees that have come back and volunteer their time here at the Tour Center. They hand out the tickets, help us with logistics of the tours. First thing we do is load people in the theater. We show them a movie that's a history of the company, how to put together a 747 really, really quick. And then we put them on a bus and take them over to the factory. So let's go to the factory now. Let's right. go get on the bus. So Sarah, how does it all start from an idea in some designer's head to get to the plant? The engineers, um, typically you've heard the phrase, it's, it's on the drawing board. Well, today that drawing board is actually a computer. And all of the design engineers, the people that work the structure, the electrical engineers, the payloads engineers, they all work together on a common database and design the airplane in the computer and they can do a mock-up of the airplane in the computer so that they can see where any interferences with their parts are. How has this speeded up the process from the old days of pen and paper? Drastically, because one of the major differences now is we don't have to build a physical airplane that was used as a mock-up. So basically we built an airplane never intended to fly, was designed to make sure all the systems, the electrical wiring, the hydraulic tubing, the structure, that everything fit together. We don't have to do that anymore. That saved time and money. Three models are built here in Everett. All are wide bodies. The venerable 747, the 767, and the 777, the world's biggest twin jet. Boeing's other jetliners, the 737 and the 757, are built at the company plant in nearby Renton, Washington. Yeah. 
After a short bus ride, we arrive at the assembly building. At first glance, we see that the interior easily matches the gargantuan scale of the exterior. This tunnel contains all of the systems for the factory, computing cables, the telephone wiring, the wastewater, fresh water, compressed air. Look down to the other end. You want to guess how far that is? That's about a third of a mile. Well, it looks like you could uh, run a marathon in here. I mean, yes, and in fact, we have a lot of current Boeing employees running, and we have one gentleman who retired from Boeing over 20 years ago who continues to come back here every day and log miles going up and down the tunnel, out of the rain. To help us envision just how many wires and cables are used in the plant, Sarah shares this tidbit of trivia. If you were to stretch all the fiber optics in this building end to end, they would run 2,000 miles, roughly the distance between Seattle and San Diego. This is the largest building in the world in volume, 98 acres under one roof, or 40 hectares, 472 million cubic feet, or 14.2 million cubic meters. Okay, okay, now how do you put that in human terms? Okay. How, how do you relate to the size of this place? Have you and your family visited Disneyland? Yes. We could put Disneyland inside this building and still have room for 12 acres of parking. <laughs> you play basketball? Yes. 911 basketball courts could fit inside this building. We could play 74 football games inside this building all at the same time. That would really speed up the tournaments. Right. Too. We could play them all on one day and it'd be over with for the entire season. Those of you who grumble over high heating and cooling bills might wonder how Boeing can afford to heat this place and still turn a profit. Incredibly, the answer is the building maintains a year-round temperature of 70 degrees all by itself. There are one million light bulbs in the ceiling, thousands of workers, and hundreds of pieces of equipment. Generating heat is not a problem. Plus, recirculating fans in the ceiling help move warm air back down to ground level. In summer, the cool breezes off Puget Sound help keep the building comfortable. All they have to do is open those big factory doors, which, by the way, are about the size of a football field, 300 feet wide and 120 feet high. Now this, you say it's, it's the largest building in the world by volume. Can, can you give us some, some uh, comparisons to other big buildings that we're familiar with? Cape Kennedy in Florida, it's the vertical assembly building is taller but it's not as wide, as deep, and as tall as this factory building. What about the, like the World Trade Center or, or the uh, Sears Tower or something? Once again, you've got the height, but you don't have the square footage that you have in this factory building. So if you could squash those buildings down, they still would fit inside right. this place. Right, that's exactly right. This area is what we call major assembly. We've got 1,700 suppliers from all over the world that provide us parts, and parts also come from every one of the states in the United States. Um, the nose section comes from a Boeing facility in Wichita, Kansas, and they actually send us nine pieces that fit in two rail cars, and the train comes all the way across the state, the United States, and brings those parts for us. The fuselage comes from Northrop in California, and they also send us parts on rail cars. This first section of the airplane is really the belly. It's being built upside down so that it's easier for the workers to stand on their feet and do all this riveting that you hear in the background. Wings are assembled over in the big white structure and it's a vertical assembly process. We load all the inner parts of the wings, and then what you see, upper, lower skin panels, after the wings been joined together, in the horizontal position, we'll add engine wiring, actuators, hydraulic tubing. Is that? This, this is the wing of a 747, and we're standing right on top of it right now. Let's try to put in perspective how big this wing really is. 
Yeah, I mean, from right here, it doesn't look that big. Okay. Picture in your mind a medium-sized car, like a Chevrolet or a Ford. Okay. Okay. We could put 45 of those cars on this wing area. 45 cars. And inside this wing is a fuel tank that holds 17,000 gallons of fuel. Now that's eight for each wing, right? Each the, wing. The other one has just as much 17,000 gallons. And in the center of these two wings is another section that also holds about 20,000 gallons of fuel. And that's what helps this airplane fly on those long non-stop flights like San Francisco to Sydney, Australia. Now this is the part of a Boeing jet most of us are familiar with, the interior of the plane. But as you can see, there's a lot more to a 747 than meets the eye. There are about 10,000 Boeing workers that work in this factory building, and they work three shifts a day, 24 hours a day. Production work is done on first shift and second shift, and that's when we have most of the employees in the factory. So now when, a, when a, an airplane is finished, does it then roll out the door and they move the next one up? Right, it's a waterfall plane? effect. And we actually start final assembly back to the left, and everything moves from left to right. And as the airplanes get closer and closer to those big football-sized doors, they get more and more complete. So now we're able to tow the airplane on its own wheels throughout the rest of the factory. From this point back, parts are moved all over the factory with the overhead crane structure. These cranes can lift a whopping 34 tons. The crane operators sit about 90 feet off the floor. Now that may not sound terribly high until you put it in perspective. The top of, of this section of the airplane, which is called the vertical fin and rudder, is 63 feet. That's equivalent to a six-story building. So we've got about 30 more feet on top of that. And if you look all the way to the roof, that's equivalent to an 11-story building. We've got a big, big building, big airplanes, lots of people, all right here. And if you were to stand in one spot long enough, you could watch an entire jet materialize before your eyes.
What do you think about the tour? Now, that is a building, I'll tell you. We love showing this factory building off to visitors. We think we've got an incredible product, and we hope you come away with a real sense of what the Boeing Company is. So the the numbers associated with this plant are almost as impressive as the plant itself, then. Right, and the, and the airplanes planes. continue to impress the passengers that fly and a statistic about 747, that airplane has flown the equivalent of 5,312 years in the air. So almost as long as recorded history. Right, right. And if you go back in recorded history, it's about the time that the ancient Egyptians were building the pyramids. So quite a legacy to live up yes. to then. Yes, okay. and we hope it continues to live on. I know it will. Thank you, Thanks, Sarah. Jeff. Okay. Assembly is just part of the story in Everett. After a jet leaves the factory, it is taken to a special hangar for painting. First, the metal is meticulously cleaned by carefully washing off a protective film. Then, a special undercoating is applied, followed by a top coat in the individual airline's color scheme and logo. The matter of paint is no small item in the overall cost of a jet. The sale price is calculated by weight, and the paint used on one of these giants can add as much as 1,200 pounds. The final phase of the building process is the so-called test drive. Each jet is thoroughly inspected and flown before it is turned over to the buyer. On any given day as you look down the Boeing flight line, you'll see a cross-section of all the airlines of the world. When all the testing and tweaking is complete, it's delivery day, truly a time to celebrate. Dignitaries, VIPs, company officials, all are on hand to watch as the plane's maker hands over the keys to the plane's owner. Very happy and a very special event. At Boeing, we spend a lot of time and effort on a program called Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI. What we try to do in this program is to do our design work and build our airplanes better and better all of the time so that we improve the quality of our products. As you've already heard, 100,000 people visit Boeing's Everett plant every year, making it one of the top destinations in the Pacific Northwest, a region famous for its wealth of tourist attractions. Perhaps it's a byproduct of Puget Sound's notorious rainfall. Whatever the reason, this place seems to sprout superlatives. The fabled 747, the first model built at this site, has carried nearly one and a half billion passengers since its debut in January of 1970. And it has flown the equivalent of more than 40,000 round trips to the moon. Every two and a half seconds, somewhere in the world, a Boeing plane is either landing or taking off. It is a testament to the stunning technology developed and utilized here, to superb administrative and logistical support, and to the men and women who show uncommon personal pride in producing the world's finest aircraft. 